This is Ryan Elliott for ID Boxing with me, trainer Dave Caldwell. Dave, welcome back to sunny Newcastle. How are you? I'm very good, thanks, mate. I was here two weeks ago with Stephen Cairns. Now I'm here with Hopi Price and Muhammad Ali. So, yeah, it's good to be back. Let's start with Hopi. Got himself a good fight this weekend. Former European champion, former world title challenger. What do you want him to learn this weekend? This is what this stage of his career is all about. Is going in there and soaking up experience from people that have been there. Been there, sampled it themselves. You know, um, when you're boxing at a good high level, top level, you get you do little things that are different to what other prospects might do, what what your you know, your standard circuit sort of fighters do. And that's what it's about now is, is hoping going in there, soaking up that energy, soaking up that experience, figuring out the problems that they're gonna be giving him. Um, and and coming out with a win and, and adding to his armour, basically. We've talked about Hopi for years and he always said how talented he is and he used to tell us when he first turned pro, when he gets his man strength and he develops that power, he's going to be a serious problem. Is that what you're starting to see now at 23 years old? Yeah, I mean, he's just 23 last week, um, but he's still a kid, he's still young. Um, but he is strong, I mean, the people... He spars lightweights and, and super featherweights and they can't believe how strong he is. Um, He's not one of these that balloons up in weight, puts a lot of weight on. You know, he's, he's always around, he's, he's not around Super Banner, but he's always around the feather, Super Featherweight himself. Um, but he's getting stronger and stronger. He's getting more and more wiser. The experience from sparring that he's, he's had over the years. You know, Kid Gallard, um, uh, Leon Woodstock, Kane Baker. Kane Baker, so strong, a lot bigger. Constantly putting on him, things like that. He's dealing with people and this weekend, on, a, on, a, on a regular basis, experiencing all that sort of stuff. Not Boxer, just them, plenty more to, you know, you can't just mention Jordan even in the gym. Stephen Kent, he's getting a lot, a lot of different varied sparring. Then you go into a fight night, you're ticking a lot of boxes, you understand that physical presence, that draining. You know, people look at him and think, oh, drag him until later rounds, he'll be tired, get, get close to him, he'll be, you know, he'll, he'll be vulnerable. He's dealt with a lot of them sort of things in his preparations. Now he's doing it in fight time with experienced fighters are going to look to do that. And that's that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to seeing how he handles it. He signed a new deal with Matchroom, obviously on this next gen card this weekend, but are we close to him headlining a show like this maybe in Leeds? Yeah, listen, it's still it's still a work in progress. It's still not, you know, it's, it's nine and oh. I'm not interested in, in him at this stage being fighting for major titles and being pushed and rushed and then you're getting them up there and then because of experience they might not look oh shine might have gone for a fight or two and then people start writing them off and you know they're getting criticized for it they're, they're developing so when he's ready to build off the leash then he'll be headlining big shows at Leeds Arena then you know next gen shows why not he's, he's in that he's in that you know in that conversation now but this year it's all about the next stage, building on, adding to experience, looking good, learning about himself. So when next year comes and he gets let off the leash, into your top fights, into your major title fights, he's got everything there. Busy man this weekend, Muhammad Ali's making his professional debut. I spoke to him before, he doesn't lack confidence for a teenager. He said, I want to be world champion, I want to be undisputed champion. How excited are you about Muhammad Ali ahead of his pro debut? Yeah, very. It's, it's very important for, for kids to believe in themselves. And but I like Ali because he understands he's got a lot to learn in the game. It's not, it's not just... They're his dreams. There's nothing wrong with those dreams. And that's why I expect fighters that I work with to have big dreams. But he also understands there's a process. He's starting out, he's making his debut. And he's got a lot of learning to do, a lot, a, a lot of education in the gyms, sparring, um, fighting. He's seen how I am with him and how I won't let him get, even though because he's massive talent, same as Ali, I won't let him run before they come walk. Um, because I'm thinking about longevity and he understands that. And that's why I like working with him because he, he does understand that. Um, but he's, he's got some great attributes, he's very, very fast. He can punch, he's got moves, he's got great feet. Um, he just needs that education. And as that goes along, then you'll, you'll see him develop. He's a good fighter. I like he's got a, he's got a good attitude, he wants to learn. Um, he's not one of these kids that just, you know, just, just thinks it's just going to come. Yes, he has lofty ambitions, but he knows he's got to work hard for it. Coach throwing around this morning about Conor Ben's next move. Manny Pacquiao has apparently agreed to fight him. 
Kel Brooks came out and saying he wants to fight him. What do you make of those two fights? A lot of people not keen to see either. I'm, I'm not. Listen, I've, I've said before, I, I don't wish to see Kel box anybody. I, for me, riding out into the sunset on the Amir Khan fight, for him, he's never going to get any bigger than that. You know, that, that was, you can have beef all you want now with Connor and things like that, but that was, that was going on for years, like a decade or whatever. So he's never going to have the same satisfaction. Um, I don't like seeing Pacquiao, come on. A, a, a legend of the sport, but now about 144 year old, you know? I, I, don't, I don't like seeing fighters coming out of retirement and, and being used as a name for a, for a kid on the way up. Listen, let's be real. Conor Ben wouldn't want, want, be fit to lace Pacquiao's boots at, at, at any sort of level when he was, you know, as, as a world champion at the top of his game. You know, look at the people that Pacquiao beat. Now, you, if you go in and you beat Pacquiao now, so what? You know, so what? it's like when you see after after Roy Jones got beat for the second time against Harbour, I stopped watching it. That, for me, that was like that's that's him done. He's because I see him as a legend. So it's like. I won't watch. I won't watch people like that keep on going. I just feel that I want to remember them for what they was. These kids now, they look at Roy Jones now and they think, "Is that what you're making a fuss about?" They don't see what it was. It's the same thing as Pacquiao. If Pacquiao comes back, it's the same thing. You know, I'm not really physically interested in in, in what what Connor's doing right now, um, for obvious reasons. So much cloud. For me, if you're gonna if you're gonna go and fight, go and go and shout out Ennis. All the big names in that division. That's a stacked division. Shouting out two people that are retired, two people that everybody knows are well past the best. You know, you wanna be you wanna be a world champion. You wanna be one of the best fighters out there. Go and fight the other guys. You are having the leash let off and everything, all that. Go and fight the best guys out there. That, I just don't see it. I just, all it is is cash grab. All it is cash grab. You want to make money? Great, not a problem. Make your money, but but that tells you what where he's looking at. Furious at negotiations this week have gone, I think, beyond public at this point. What have you made of what we've seen the the back and forth? It's it's YouTuber esque, isn't it? That's what it is. It's, Tyson's always going to be shouting and ranting and raving. Um, that's just what he is. That's how he's, how he's probably so popular and, and people want to watch because you don't know what you're going to get with him. Are you going to get a you know, nice message? Are you going to get a, a vile message or what? It is what it is. He knows how to sell a fight. Um, but I don't care as long as the fight happens. I just hope the fight happens. And, and Usyk, for me, whatever they've said, you got to do this, do this, okay. Got to do this, okay. It's like, you got to do it now. If that doesn't happen, what is the next best fight out there really for Tyson? If that doesn't happen, it's, it's a nugget in the bollocks for boxing because boxing's just fucking shit at the moment. I'm, I've been in the game for 32 years. I've been in the game for, and, and uh, it's probably the most, it's always had ups and downs, don't get me wrong, it's always, and it's standard, and that's what I said to people, it is standard, it always has ups and downs. We'll have another little peak again soon. There's a lot of things that are, people are trying to find the feet, and he's trying to get the zone going, and they're trying to find a platform, they're trying to build a platform there, but it takes time. Sky have just got boxer a year in, they've still got to find the feet, got to build a stable, gonna take time. You've got other people that are the same. But I just feel as though, when it comes down to the fights, the fights aren't getting made when they're in negotiations. It's just a, more than anything, the fights need to be made now. Because while the platforms and the promoters are trying to re rebuild and to, to get that, that dip, strength in depth again, the fights need to be made to keep the interest of the public going. Because otherwise, they're not going to be asked. Because, like it or not, the YouTubers are getting attention. And you can slag it off all you want. And I was one of them at the beginning. You can slag it off all you want. But they're getting eyes on the sport. Not not the sport, them. They're getting eyes on them. Right? But professional boxing, misfits, YouTubers, two different things. But it's the it's it is boxing. And they're getting the, the eyes for people to watch boxing. 
Whereas boxing at the moment, because the fights aren't happening, people get bored of it. And I'm in the sport and I see it and I understand it. You can't be blinkered just because I love boxing. You can't be blinkered and say, oh no, no. You've got to see what's happening. And it's down to things like where negotiations are that long and protracted. Back in the day, we weren't aware of negotiations. Boom, all of a sudden there's fight mates like, oh, fucking hell. Now, because of social media, everyone wants to know every step of negotiations, every step of, if you've got, you, you just, from the initial talking, where, where it's just two big fights, it takes a long time. People are impatient and they want to know, that why ain't it happening yet, why ain't it happening yet? It takes a long time, but because it's in the public eye, people get bored of it all. And there's so much talk going on, you get kind of switched up. Do you know what I love? I love Tank Davis and Garcia. Two young kids, unbeaten, got a lot to lose. A lot of balls, a lot of pride, unbeaten records. Who's going to be the superstar for the sport for the future? They've just gone in there. I know there's been talks about it in the past and what have you, but when it comes down to the right, let's get it done. So they went there, they got it done. The fight's been made. Please got that fight happen. Because for me, that is they're, they're carrying the flag for the sport right now because they've gone out there and got it done. And I think Ladies more people need to do I'm that same the thing. Let's get the fight done. That's what I was going to say to you. That was my next point. Garcia Davis, it feels like it's a fight we desperately needed right now. In terms of a fight now, now that it's done, who wins and how? Ah. I think Garcia, so Garcia is one of those where at the first, when he first came out, I just Anything thought it was a YouTube kid. For this weekend? And I just thought it flash, good looking, got all, all his followers, and that's why. It, and then obviously, I got to know his amateur background and his credit. And I'm like, whoa, so actually, this kid's actually, actually done the hard work. Very it's just that he's very, very switched on in terms of social media and how to build his brand. So it is what it is. Tank Davis, I'm a big fan of his. I think he's vicious. I think for me, he's probably. Um, since Mike Tyson, for a fighter, forget weekend. about weight, for a fighter to have that aura about him where it can sleep with it any time, any time in a fight with either shot, it can put you to sleep. He's that guy, do you know what I mean? He's at that aura when he walks the ring, you're going there to see a Tank Davis knockout. So I'm really excited for it. Um, I think Davis beats him. I just think Garcia, people underestimate how fast Davis is and how smart an actual boxer Tank Davis is because you think about his power. So I just think he has the edge and I expect I expect another, he might be losing and he might have to get up himself because Garcia punches and Garcia's fast. And so he might be losing, but I think we see another spectacular knockout, but it's a fight. Listen, I would love to go to that fight. That's how good this fight is. I think it's an outstanding fight. It's, one, it's probably one that I'm most excited about right now. All right, Dave, thank you as always for speaking to ID Box, and we'll catch you soon.